most often when we talk about transparency in counseling as a verbal skill. We take the time to explain things to clients. We make transparent our counseling practices, the processes we engage in, sometimes our theoretical orientation. We describe to them what is going to happen when they agree to participate in a particular therapeutic intervention, or we talk to them about the kinds of things that might be helpful to do in a session and why those things are helpful. All of these examples of transparency serve the purpose of dispelling the mystery around the counseling process and equalizing some of the inherent power between client and counselor. The more we share this information with clients, the, the more engaged they become in the process and the more ownership they take over the process as they make informed choices about what they think will work for them, what, what might not work for them, and negotiate with the therapist the direction and the processes that they are involved in throughout the counseling process. But one of the places where I think we often fail to talk about transparency is in note taking. I've seen a number of therapists over the years and they've had various practices around note taking. Some take notes in the session, some don't take notes during the session, but I can see there's a file on their desk and assume that there's notes in there about the things that we've talked about. And I didn't really process that when I was a client However, as I thought about that more and more as a therapist, I realized the inherent power in that file sitting on the desk that has something written about me that I don't really know about. In my own counseling process, I decided to do my note taking differently so that this would be one aspect of me demonstrating transparency and inviting my clients actively into the process of counseling, every bit of the process of counseling is me. I had the privilege of having time after I saw clients to go for a walk and to dictate my notes into my phone. And I made sure that I have had a secure email address for every client that I was working with. I addressed the notes to them. And so my conversation as I was walking and dictating into my phone would be things like, this is what you and I talked about today. And I really noticed that you were um, particularly uh, reactive to this thing that had come up during the week and here's the way in which we processed it and we talked about this as a possibility going forward etc. So it was my perception of what had happened in the relationship between the two of us in that conversation that we had had and my handing that back to the client that I was working with for them to consider and reflect on. I also sometimes would do um, a little bit of note taking in the form of shared co-creation of bits of information during the session. So we might draw a diagram, we might do sticky tabs on the wall, and I would always photograph those pieces so that the client would have those from week to week as we progressed through the counseling process. For me, this was a way of equalizing power and also making transparent the way in which I was framing what I had heard from them so that they had an opportunity to say, oh, that really resonates with me. Or I think I looked at that a little bit differently. And we could revisit those notes in the next session if there was something that was a little bit amiss. This is a very different type of note taking than what happens sometimes in counseling sessions where the notes become more um, interpretive, where they don't necessarily represent things that the counselor would say directly to the client. And I guess the question that I ask myself and I invite you to consider is, would you feel comfortable with a client at any moment asking to see their notes? And if not, then what is it that's going on in the note taking process that, that restricts that um, possibility of transparency with clients? And what's the meaning of that from the position of power within the counseling relationship? And then lastly, what would it take for you to consider a different way of approaching notes that allowed them to become part of the counseling process from which the client could actually benefit? Of course, you know, you may get into situations in practicum or in private practice or in working with organizations where you have external um, forces that impact, impact the way in which you are required to take notes. 
There's ways though to work around that from a philosophical positioning that is client-centered in the way that you word things, in the way that you approach your note-taking and in the way in which you make transparent to clients the expectations that are on you and the purpose of those notes and why they are the way they are and allow them to make some choices around some of those things. 